right, I am working on uh, a dragon painting for my Celtic Collective students. Celtic Collective is one of my three art clubs that I host over at Awesome Art School. And I have a whole, it, it, November is our dragon themed um, every month in the Celtic Collective, which is, I also run it with my friend Lucy Bryden, who is an artist. We have a podcast called One Scott, One Not. We talk about all things fae, fairies and elves and anything fantasy base we love medieval things and we're doing dragons for the month of november so i'm going to have this whole big watercolor dragon painting but i want to spend this youtube video exploring the best ways to make moons i have a whole like thing in mind but i don't know the best way to make a moon so that's what i'm going to play with on youtube today Oh, I have a hot press, I'm sorry, hot press paper over here, which is nice and smooth, 140 pound. These are both by Fabriano. Um, this is a look at the, I'll put links in the description box, but this is the hot pressed. This is the cold press. Um, so I'm going to be kind of doing like a side by side comparison. I think that moons would look cooler with granulating watercolors. So I have um, a bunch picked out. And then I also have granulating medium. So I thought that would be really fun to mess around with. I also have iridescent medium. These are things I have actually never tried before. So kind of testing a lot of different things today. Um, I made a little list of colors that I think would be cool to try. And I'm gonna just do like the, um, mess around with five different techniques and see which one I like the best. And I'm gonna be testing the same techniques on the hot press and the cold press. So cold press is just really absorbent if you're new to watercolors and it takes a lot more water and the effects come out a bit differently. So I really wanna have that be one of the tests. When I'm doing a drawing heavy based watercolor project, I usually use hot press cause it's so smooth. It's really easy to draw on. The downside is it doesn't hold or take as much water in the same exact way. But that's why I'm doing the side comparison. I also have some salt to play with. I also have some um, alcohol to, to um, drop in for different effects. So yeah, I'm gonna do a little test and I thought you'd, I'd take you along for the ride and see how some of these compare. So here, my little list of colors are, uh, these are all Daniel Smith colors. Um, here's my swatch sheet. I like to swatch my watercolors big so I can like see them. Hey, nothing's worse than like a teeny tiny little swatch. So um, the other day I had gone through and picked out some. So I'm going to go turn my camera off and find them because that's super boring. But the first one I'm going to start with is Lunar Violet. So I found my Lunar Violet and I'm going to make a note on how I'm doing them all so I don't, I don't forget. So I'm going to do this one wet on wet, wet on wet. I'm just writing myself notes so I can remember. And this is Lunar Violet. Lunar Violet. Um, yeah, so when you do wet or wet, that means you wet the, the surface first and then you put in your color. So, here's a big old brush by Paulina Bright. I just did a whole video on watercolor brushes and I will link to that for you in case you are learning or trying to figure out what the best watercolor brush is for your purposes. All right, so there we go. That's wet. Lunar Violet is a granulating watercolor by Daniel Smith. And granulating, I'll show you what that means. All right, I'm trying to get a big enough pool. So this is wet and this is going into wet. So as you can see, I'm gonna zoom way in. When you have these wet, wet surfaces and you add wet, wet watercolor, just making everything nice and juicy. It kind of, the paper acts like a really thin sponge. And granulating means it kind of separates out and you can see these little particles. 
All right, so that's wet. Wet on wet. And just for shits and giggles, I'm going to add some little dollops of um, alcohol. I have so little. Let's see if I drop them in. Boink. Boink. These could be like moon craters, perhaps. This could also just be a really stupid idea. Oh, I know they're not all the same size, Karen. <laughs> they're like exactly the same, everyone. I kind of want to make them different sizes, I imagine. I've never been on the moon, but I've stared at it, and they definitely have craters of different sizes. Well, maybe one's kind of big and maybe I'm just really bad about making moons <laughs> all right so that was what on what and that's on the cold press I'm so just gonna let that dry as you can see where you put the alcohol it kind of disperses it it repels and that's the fun part about alcohol all right I'm gonna do the same thing with my hot press paper now again, hot press can't, doesn't take water the same way as the cold press does, so I don't expect it to look exactly the same. But we shall see. Okay, that's nice and wet. Now again, getting the lunar violet. No pun intended. And put this around. Kind of does everything really differently. Which is why I'm doing this side by side comparison. We can kind of decide which one looks more lunar at the end of all these tests. And I'm also doing only one coat. We could certainly do two coats as well. It's, there's a lot of like variations that we could test. I kind of like that one better already. Oh, my cat is scratching to come in. You have to wait, little catto. So I'm doing the same thing where I'm just going to take the alcohol. Hold on, Zoe. The little cat knock at the door. It's so cute. <laughs> so we have these. Yes, lunar creators. Oh, I put that in the water by accident. All right, let me let my cat in and I'll come back. So our moon's growing here. The next color I had written down that I wanted to try was Rose of Ultramarine. So this one I'm going to do wet on wet the same way as we did before, but I'm going to drop some salt in instead. So that's wet. And I love this color so much. No, <laughs> it's always up here. Don't come and drink the paint water. It's not safe right now, girlfriend. She loves my paint water. No, it's dirty with actual watercolors. You can't drink out of that, Zozo. Here's that. Do, 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 do. I like, didn't even stay in the lines. Okay, now I'm going to take some table salt and just sprinkle it around while it's still wet. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's 
Zoe, I love you, but there's no cat spots right now, girlfriend. She's like, but there is, Mom. <laughs> okay, let's get this one wet. I'm like watercoloring with one hand because I have <laughs> don't want to put down the salt. Okay, and then we got our right on wet. I can't wait to see these all side by side. Okay, and then again, these are just single layers. So I definitely want to make sure I have some uh, that have double layers as well. Could actually test about 10 different circles because we could have double layers or triple layers. Again, I'm gonna take the salt and this is just regular table salt. Sprinkle it in everywhere. Put some more in the wet one over here. Okay. All right, so that was the Rose of Ultramarine. I gotta wipe th write that down, wet on wet with salt. Okay, and wet on wet with salt. Okay, now I'm gonna take a third color, which is Shadow Violet, which I absolutely love as well. And for this one, I'm gonna do wet on dry. First I gotta find my paint color. All right, so now I'm gonna do wet on dry. Get a little puddle going. And I guess we'll do this side first. So as you can see, it doesn't do all of the Kind of spreading around that watercolor does when it's already wet. These brushes are by Paulina Bright. They're really lovely. Super hold a ton of water. I love them. And this time I'm gonna drop in just water droplets. Again, I kinda like the little crater look. So this will just be water. Let's see if we can. If that will do anything whatsoever. Okay, and now we'll do the same thing with the hot press. mix going. Shadow Violet reminds me of, um, it reminds me so much of the Elegant Writer, which is like a calligraphy pen. And it, when its colors separate, it also reminds me of Moon Glow. It's the same vein where kind of like the colors can separate out and you can see kind of blues and pinks all in the same vein. Okay, I'm gonna try doing the water droplets. Boink. <laughs> it looks like crap on the other side, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> that looks awful. Ugh. Hilarious. All right, Cascadian Green is up next, which is really fun color also. Where is it over here? Oh no, it's not over there. Where's my Cascadian Green? I need to go find it. The next one I'm gonna do is Cascadian Green. Cascadian Green is also one of these really interesting colors. And for this one, I am going to add some granulating medium to it. If you're supposed to add it in like a healthy dose, so consider that healthy, I definitely do. 
Okay, that's probably 50% medium. And I'm going to go in. Cascadian Green is this really cool um, blue green. Oh, it's like already granulating. I wish I had not started with this littler brush. I wanted to use the great big one. Again, this is working on the cold press. Super absorbent. Spreading it around evenly. And I think I'm gonna do two coats on that one. This will be our kind of two coats test. <clears throat> And then same thing over here, where I'm going to do a big splash of the granulating medium. And mix that in with the Cascadian Green. It's almost like straight up, it's almost like straight up medium with no water and the pigments. And I'm going to do that over here on my hot press paper. Very interested to see how this comes out. So pretty large moons actually. I'm being pretty quick and dirty about this whole thing because we're on YouTube. Everybody's in a hurry. Okay, boop, boop, boop. Now, what's cool about this green is you can see everything separating out, which looks really, really neat. Now, on the palette especially, let me see if I can zoom in and show you. You can see the color, see all that separation? That's what the granulating medium is doing. Although on the paper, it doesn't look very granulated, <laughs> interestingly. Very, very interestingly. A little bit. It's kind of like the green and the blues are separating out from each other, but the hot pressed, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't look super granulated. It doesn't look more than the actual granulated, like, like um, the Daniel Smith, especially like the for instance, the lunar violet. You can talk about granulated. And oh my god, the water, the water, that experiment is a hot mess. But see how green that's true granulated watercolor. It's like it literally comes apart. So interesting. All right, I'm gonna uh, take a second and dry this with my hair dryer. That these are now dry. So I'm gonna do another coat on top of the ones we just did. And I am also going, I'm gonna drop in some of this alcohol because it looks really good as the craters in the moons above it. So I'm going to see if it works on with the double layer. Oops. I'm doing with this really like rough and <laughs> rough and tumble. Ah, just dropped my brush. Where is the alcohol? So I'm going to see if that'll work with like a, since there's already some watercolor under it, that will work. If it does not work, because there's already stuff under it. I don't know. That's why we're doing this. All right, I'm going to do the same thing over here. The water looks like complete crap. All 
All right, so I'm going to do a second coat on the hot pressed. This time I have more water and less granulating medium. to blend these together because it's wet on dry it does not super wet and again I'm going to add the alcohol which I have like a tiny bit of left I have like a cap full that's it <laughs> sing it really sparingly Come on, give me a crater. Just do two. All right, and then this last one, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do Imperial Purple and I'm gonna mix it with some iridescent medium. And see what that looks like. Oh yeah, I love Imperial Purple, it's so beautiful. And I'm going to do, I guess I'm doing wet on dry because I'm just mixing it for the first time. Oh man, oh man. That is a lot. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. So Imperial Purple is one of my absolute favorite colors of Daniel Smith because it also, it is granulating and when the colors separate, it separates into like separate pinks and purples, which is amazing. Right, and it has the iridescent, quite a lot of iridescent medium mixed in there. Like a lot, a lot. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the hot crust. Maybe I'll add some bigger chunks of salt. This time as a final, final fun experiment. Nope. <laughs> okay, where's my big salt? This is great big kosher salt. Oops, I did not do that quickly enough, I don't think. Whoops, I'm sorry about, I forgot about you. Okay. All right, so, I'm gonna drop some salt in here because this is annoying me. It like will not dry because I did a crazy bad job. We'll see if that helps. <clears throat> it has any effect whatsoever. All right, so I'm going to dry these and then I'm going to kind of uh, assess, assess the results. Stay tuned. All right, so these all still have to, the salt all over them. So I just want, but I didn't want it to show you every step uh, before I flicked off the, so the, the salt. One thing I noticed was that the granulating medium, I, no, I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't look super granulated. Again, this is a naturally granulated watercolor, super granulated. This one, uh, not as much, which is again, very strange because if you look in the palette, you can see it's super granulated, but somehow that doesn't like translate when it gets to the watercolor paper. So I just thought that was interesting. The water version looks like complete crap compared <laughs> to the alcohol, looks really lunar. 
ironically, in the lunar violet. But I mean, that looks really planetary. And I actually like it better on the hot press, interestingly. Uh, it looks quite different. That's the same exact application, but just cold press, hot press, and it's a lot lighter. Um, and the just the watercolor just presents really differently, which I find fascinating. So because lunar violet is naturally granulating watercolor, the granules kind of like they seep into the cold press. Um, so it creates a really cool effect. I just like this one. Uh, just looks to me personally. I just like this one. This one looks almost like a rounded planet and this one just looks like a pancake with like weird holes in it um, I really do like the salt again. These were already kind of granulated watercolors. This is rose of ultramarine I'm gonna go knock the salt off but that it just makes beautiful beautiful marks. probably having a little bit of salt maybe on one side um, with and having the watercolor also change colors would also be very striking. I'm just going to knock the salt off into the trash can so I don't make a big old mess. The water to make the kind of look of craters I don't think was successful. This was the one I just did, um, which actually looks kind of neat. Little neat little pock marks. This is the kosher salt on the hot press, which I think it makes really interesting, very cool. Um, effects. This is the regular table salt, which gives a different effect entirely, but not really lunar. That looks like that looks hideous. That was this was the two coats of the wet on dry with alcohol, and the alcohol doesn't really can't really penetrate through that second letter. So that's a good lesson to know that I need to just do if I'm going to use the alcohol to just do it on the one coat. But so far, I think this one definitely looks ah the most lunar. I'm losing all my palettes here. Um, same thing over on this side. Just gonna scrape the salt off really quickly. <laughs> the one with the this one is just a hot mess. Um, although when you put it back from the camera, this does look very planetary, um, actually, because of the natural variations in that color. That's why I chose these colors. This is shadow violet. I see pinks, I see blues um, and blacks and, and it all the variation kind of makes it look planetary. So this is still kind of wet and gross. So, but this, that doesn't look bad as far as making a realistic kind of planetary look. Again, this is too much. Um, I like the hot press version better. Um, this is again the, this is rolls of ultramarine, which you can see again, the colors separate out. You see purples and pinks. Um, that looks pretty nice too. Um, just less salt. It was just too much on the salt. The two coats of alcohol and then the alcohol again uh, it's, it's it's okay, but I, I want more so I like the more exaggerated crater look and then this one had the iridescent medium in. I have to say I used a ton of medium and it isn't all that sh iridescent uh, I can see it more on the hot press than I see on the cold press so I think you're better off just getting iridescent watercolors rather than trying to mix the medium in. That's my, that is my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So this one I think looks successful. This one looks the most like moon-like. This one looks planetary and even this one and this one. So it's kind of a tie, but it's definitely helpful to do these side-by-side -side comparisons just so there's no surprises. I don't really like surprises all the time when I'm creating, especially if I'm curating a lesson for a bunch of students. Um, I want to know what's going to happen. And so this helps educate myself so I can best educate my students. So I'm going to go ahead and make my dragon my dragon watercolor sketch masterpiece. I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do it on the hot press and I am going to use this technique up here um, and it'll be much larger. So the moon will be in the center with the dragon going across it. I cannot wait, but thanks for hanging out with me this week. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you soon with a new video.